Well, good morning. I know it has been a rough week. Some people have been without power. Some people have been without heat and, and all these things have been going inside uh, our Lent season. Uh, one of the things that I want to address this week that's a very important factor in our Lent season is the importance of prayer. And so I wanted to go back to the blueprint for prayer. Um, there are so many things, so many details inside that we really get to, 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 to the heart of the matter and, and really serve as the need that we have in order to find out where we are with Christ in, in this Lent season. And it's definitely a season for penance. It's definitely a season to grow. It's definitely a season where, where we really get to acknowledge God and who he is in our life, but also reflect on some of the things that we may be dealing with or going through or maybe haven't even discovered ourselves yet. So I want to go into uh, uh, Luke uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. And it says this. He was praying in a certain place, Jesus, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Now, most of us usually know the Our Father prayer, but Jesus is really dictating how we should go about praying. Now, I, I want to go back to just a one essence here because I want to also transfer over to the scripture found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. But I want to go back to the very text where it says, Look, Jesus. Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Now, I find this kind of unique and kind of uh, interesting and funny because of the fact that uh, Jesus was known for his constant prayer. You can look throughout Luke and find Jesus praying. It says that uh, in Luke chapter 3, we find that he, he was baptized and he prayed. We find that he was in the wilderness and he prayed. We find him in the Garden of Gethsemane. We find him at the, at the mountaintop. We find him in the Mount of Olives. We find him amongst the people. He is constantly praying. So we know this is, is really an essence of prayer. When we look at Lent season, we're often looking to of Jesus' time in the wilderness praying and seeking God. Through, through a time of prayer of 40 days. Now, now when I look at this, remember we were just talking about Jesus is, is their teacher. He's the rabbi. He's, he's trying to illustrate to them uh, uh, the importance of prayer. But they asked that they, they would be able to pray like John had taught his disciples to pray, knowing that he was the one amongst them that really knew the essence of prayer. But I, I wondered about that, and I wanted to take you back to a text where it, it probably puts us in the mind of the disciples, uh, of Jesus' disciples, wondering about John's prayer. And you would have to go back to Luke chapter 5, verses 33 through 35. It says, then they said to him, this is the uh, Pharisees uh, uh, saying to Jesus, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray. But your disciples eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, you cannot make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them. Can you? Now, it's funny. They were already with Jesus. He was already important uh, uh, for them to be able to talk and, and, and walk with him because he was physically uh, manifested before them. They could actually communicate with him. The hard part is when uh, Jesus tells them when I'm gone, they're going to need to do that. They're going to need to seek my face. They're going to need to fast. And, and, and it's going to be a, a different element. How many of us find it very difficult to pray, not being able to see Jesus in physical manifestation before us, right? So, so, so Jesus addresses that issue. But I know that many of us constantly wonder, well, what is the best way to pray? How should we pray? You know, uh, there are all types of prayers and all types of ways that we pray. But he gives us a formula to be able to pray. 
Now, there is no one kind. As a matter of fact, John Wesley states, with all prayer, all sorts of prayer, public, private, mental, vocal, do not be diligent in one kind of prayer and negligent in all others. Let's use them all. And so I want to take you to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. Now, in the, in the same like manner as it is in Luke that we just discovered, he also uses the formula of prayer, our Father. And that our Father, of course, is, is dedicated as the adoration of God himself. Now, God himself has many names, right? So it, it, it's just the, the, the element of being able to respond in an intimate way, calling out God as Father, as one that is close, reminding us of if you have a parent who truly loves you, you know that you can communicate with him and he will listen. He will hear your prayers and he will answer you. Now, before I start that, Jesus gives a list of do nots, <laughs> what we should not be doing before we start into the blueprint of prayer. Okay, and I'm going to list them for you. Number one, he says that when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites reading from Matthew chapter six, verses five, right? For they love to stand and pray in the synagogue at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you that they have already received their award. So when you pray, uh, uh, you don't have to be uh, open and boisterous about every single prayer that you have. Now, this may be in contradiction because some of you may say, well, if he says that, so does that mean that we don't have to pray in open congregation? Does that mean that we don't pray openly with others? No, there's just a distinguishing mark. A distinguishing mark of how your prayers are spoken. If they're within, Jesus knows the heart of a man. And so when we're praying, we're not praying so that we can be seen. We're not praying so that, that others can, can value us in our status based on how we pray or what we say. Based on how much power we think that we have or, 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 or how extinguished we are because of the big words that we use. There is no there, there, there is no distinction in your prayer as long as it comes from the heart. Get to the root of the matter that when you pray, it's from the heart. That's why he goes on to say, but whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So. I want to just take this time for a moment. There are times when you pray openly and there are times when you get alone with God. That is your intimate time, your intimate moment. See, there are things that we want to tell God that we don't need to express to everybody in the world. Amen. There are times that are uniquely for you and the father. Jesus often showed this when he was amongst the crowds teaching and praying. But then there came a moment he had to get away from the crowds and get along with the father and, and, and begin to talk with him about some things that maybe he himself was addressing. He himself was being able to uh, be being able to understand or to know what the father's will was. We see this more distinctly in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, you know, let this cup pass from me. Let let what I'm about to do, Lord God, be, be, be taken from me. But nevertheless, not my will. But your will be done. So, so there, there is a certain criteria. There are things that are going on inside of us that we don't want everybody to know. That's why we get alone in our closet. That's why we ask God of the certain issues that we're dealing with, the, the certain things that, that we have issues and problems with. So it's going to be different than when we pray out in the open for others or when we are praying for others. Okay, we, we don't, we don't, when, when, when my wife and I discuss things, it's not for everybody else to hear. It's for us to know and distinguish between ourselves. It's an intimate moment between my wife and I, the same way that it's an intimate moment between you and God. And also a great way to receive a download from God when God wants to inform you of some things that are going on within you. Not everybody needs to know. It's a challenge that, that, that sometimes you can't hear amongst other people. And that intimate time alone, sometimes being by yourself, you can hear more. You can reflect more. You, you can receive more because nobody's pulling on your curt tail asking you to pray. Nobody's leaning on you and asking you to receive from, from, from you what you want to receive for yourself. So 
Be mindful of that when you're alone in your closet praying for others. It goes on to say here that when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. And I like this too, because oftentimes we see a lot of pastors or ministers pray, and sometimes they may pray lengthy prayers. And that, that's not to, to, to say that, that a long prayer is, is unnecessary. But what it's saying is that, you know, how people sometimes will come to you and they'll talk and talk and talk, but they're not saying anything. And, 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 and it kind of gets discouraging and overwhelming when people use so many words, you know, without with, without uh, uh, anything that they're they're really uh, imparting to you that it's a value. And I'm reminded of uh, of Job when Job was maybe a little bit complaining to God about what was going on. And, 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 and God answers him and he says, who darkens my counsel with, 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 with words without knowledge? And I think that that is so powerful when you hear that uh, uh, displayed uh, in, 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 uh, in, the, in the context of God and being alone with God and, 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 and being able to ask him of things. And so uh, we need to remind ourselves that it's not the number of words that we say or, or, or how we say it. Amen. It's the point that we just need to pray. Now, going on uh, uh, further, um, so uh, I want to uh, let you know that he, he tells us all these things. And he said, look, your father knows what you need before you ask him. It's the point of just being able to convey and, and speaking and communicating with him and speaking in a language or, or, or speaking uh, as you would, you would to somebody else. He wants to hear from you. That's the whole designated purpose is to be in commune with God. Being in commune with the triune God, establishing that community in unity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit so that you can be a part of the context of what goes on in this life. And that is so much what we need and we should so value it because if you want to get the expressions of God, you have to get with him. You have to be on the same page with him. You have to be restored by him. You have to do uh, 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 as much as you can can to get into the presence of God. And the way that we do that is through prayer. Now, I know there was a story one time going with all this value and theme about how we should go about praying. And everybody has a different idea. As I've said before, there are many ways to pray. There's many ways on how to pray. And there was a story about these three young, uh, young preachers who were sitting around uh, watching the repairman repair a line. And, and they were discussing this matter of prayer and how we should pray. And one of the preachers uh, 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 boistered up and he said, look, I think there's only one really good way to pray. And that's really to kneel and to seek God. And the next one spoke up. And he said, no, no, I, I really do believe that the only way that you can really extend to God is by standing up and reaching your hands out to God in full sincerity and, and really praying out your expectation and your needs. And the, and the third one says, well, I disagree with all of you all. He said, look, uh, when you pray, you should lay prostrate on the floor with your hands spread out wide, uh, uh, expressing your penitence before before God and, and letting him know how humble you are. And the phone repairman looking down uh, at the floor, hearing overhearing the conversation, he says, well, I can tell you that, that, that the most experience I have in praying is hanging upside down on a telephone pole. Now, when you think about that, there are many times and expressions that we have that we pray at any moment, at anywhere, any given time, regardless of whatever situation that we're in. It's difficult sometimes to be able to pray maybe when you're not feeling your best, maybe when you're in a difficult moment and you don't know how to pray or what to pray. Maybe you're new to this whole thing and you say, well, uh, uh, well, how is it that we can pray and, and, and God acknowledges our prayers or that we actually can know that we'll receive something on the other side? And this is why Jesus tells us how to pray. So he says this, pray then in this way, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
We're adoring you, God. We're, we're asking you. We're calling upon you right now as somebody who we're connected with, somebody that, 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 that we know will hear us and answer us, somebody that we know is true and honors his word just like a father does with his child. And I'm, I'm so reminded that, that many have called him Abba, Father, which is truly a close connection with being Daddy God. And that is powerful in a sight. How many of you have known that a caring father who hears his his child's distress won't run and, and, and he and heed to his child's demands or wishes or wants? And so be reminded that when we call upon him, how is it that you're addressing him? What purpose is it that you're addressing him? What has he been to you? What is he to you? Because that's how we call upon him. And it's not necessarily that we have to use father, but whatever manner or way that he has been or is to you or the God that you are calling upon right now, what kind, what, what, what is he to you at that moment? Amen. What is he? And so we call him in adoration. We call him because we want to make him personal to us. And then he goes on uh, 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 to say, your kingdom come, your will be done. Now, this matter is consecration. We have to understand that, that in our prayer lives, we're wanting to be more like him. And so in order to manifest that, you have to understand what his will is, what, what the kingdom of God's purpose is. And that's the manner in which we should often be praying. We should pray, God, whatever is happening on your throne, that's what I want here on earth. And whatever is manifested here on earth, I want to let you know that upon your throne so that you can answer, so that, so that my will and your will can line up together. That way I can hear you. I am trying to, to, to put myself in a place of holiness, to be separate from among all of those so that I can follow the ordinance that you would have and your will for my life. Understand that's consecration. Many people wanting to be consecrated to the Lord in the Old Testament would often tear their clothes and be found in ashes because they, they, they desired to not have their will or, 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 or what they desire more than what God's will was. And so they made themselves consecrated to the Lord. And, and we do that often through prayer because we want to know, we want to hear from God. We want to follow what God's will for us, for our lives, because his purpose is greater than what we might think that our purpose is. And he be, He will begin to fulfill what he started in you and completing you when you are willing to do his will. He goes on to say, amen, uh, 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 give us this day our daily bread. Oh, I like this because so many of us are asking God for things to make what we call provision. You know, in many days we're asking for food. We're asking for the natural food. We're asking for God to bless our home. We're asking for God to bless our people. We're asking God for so many things that we may need. But how many know that we need the daily bread of God's word? I need God's word to come alive in me because this will help me stay consecrated. This will help me to know his divine will. This will help me in structuring how I pray because we begin to know that God's provision is for us. But many of us, amen, we, 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 we like to know that, that when God hears us and we, we say, God, you know, uh, 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 we, we want your, your, your provisions. And, and we, we talk about the cattle on a thousand hills. And we, we, we talk about that, that God's goodness overflows. And we, we, we talk about whatever God's, you know, uh, provision is for us is great. But we also need to understand that, that, that there comes his will as part of that. And we have to know what his will is because according to Christ's riches and glory, Amen. That doesn't constitute all the time that he'll give us what we want. But his desire is for what he wants for our lives. So he will make the provisions accordingly to his will. And we have to understand that. 
So we're not asking anything outside of God's will. Many of us want a million dollars. Many of us want peace on earth. Many of us want to see that this country be eliminated from, from this pandemic. Many of us want to eliminate racism. Many of us want to eliminate so many other things. But how many know that the life is that he's calling us to is not an easy life, right? We need to learn from what he has given us. And so he will make provision according to his will. He goes on to say, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Now, this is truly powerful because you have to understand that many of us think that we can go on and on in, in our prayers and seeking God for our will and our needs and, and our wants and our desires. But God says like, people cannot receive if they're indebted to people. You know, I, I know that many of us might challenge the world and say that we're supposed to be the lenders and not the borrowers. But how many tell you, how many know that, that if you show unforgiveness toward others, when you can't forgive somebody, regardless of maybe words that are spoken, regardless of something that they've given, they, they haven't given something back to you, regardless if they've made you mad or angry, regardless of whatever they have done to you, that you need to forgive them so that you may be forgiven. Otherwise, you are indebted to those people. And God says, if you can't forgive them, I can't forgive you. And you can see that within the last uh, part of the verse in 15, when you read the text, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So if we are indebted to somebody because we have ill willed or harmed somebody else by our words, by, 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 by what we have done, then we're indebted to them. And so I want you to know that if you're trying to pray sometime, but you know that you have done some harm or you've done something in, a, in, in against uh, uh, what, what you are not supposed to do and you don't stand in the seat of righteousness, that you're indebted to them. And so you have to go. The Bible says to lay your gift at the altar, go and make amends, make it right, and then come back and your heavenly father will hear you. We've got to get this right. So many of us walk around indebted to other people and wonder why our prayers are not answered. Get your debts straight. Ask God to help you. This is part of the prayer is that, God, I don't want to be indebted to anybody but you. I don't want to be leaving this world with a whole bunch of debt behind me. God, knowing that it's against your policy. I've got to get it right, not only with them, but I also have to give it, get it right with you. And if I'm not right with you, then I'm not right. Amen. So we have to understand that we need to cancel all those debts. One is by prayer and by prayer and asking God to forgive us of those debts. We will know how to make those things right. Amen. So that others may forgive you. Now. Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Let's go back. And it says here that after we, uh, we've forgiven our debtors, and it says, do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, this is hard, I know, for many of us. And I know this may go uh, in, in a context uh, of, of, of another direction, but you know, often when we pray this prayer, it says that we often pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's not the fact that, that, that God is leading us into evil. We already have an evil one that desires to lead us to temptation, but we need God's guidance in order not to be able to fall into those temptations that we have. We need, we need to be careful that we don't fall into personal uh, lust issues or, 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 or personal gratification or, 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 or be endeavored into things that are all about us. 
We need to also, you know, not be a part of those things that are part of the world that are not of God, because those will also tarry us away. We have to be careful that we pray that God would use us, amen, not only to glorify him, but to abstain from evil thoughts, to abstain from, 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 from atrocities and from, and from other things that may bring us into that fold. Because we need to stand in a righteousness before God. And that's why it begins to tell us that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. When we stand right before God because we're not involved in all the things that are not of God. That's why he tells us to be separate, amen, to be holy like him. That, that we, we ourselves, amen, will have the power to do the things that we're supposed to do in God. We will be able to pray for other people and our prayers will be answered. We will see uh, those who need to be healed or, 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 or sick or the lame walk or, or, or the blind see or, or people be delivered from different things because we're right. We're standing in right, right standing before God. And that's important in our relationship and through our prayers. Amen. So so he, we ask him not to lead us into temptation, meaning keep us safe, keep us back. He has the power to deliver us. And if you think about this um, in, in, in the New Testament, as Paul and, and, and Peter and all of them were, were, were writing out the Gospels, amen, they were living in a time, amen, of affliction and oppression of Christians because they didn't want the gospel to be made known. They, they wanted to persecute them. So, so they had to ask God to protect them, to cover them. So we ask God for protection every day over our family, over ourselves, over our church, over those. Because there are lots of things, amen, that can hinder us from seeking God, hinder us from praying, hinder us from being led in the right way. So we ask these things and pray. So in, 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 in all of this, in all these contexts, he teaches us how to pray. Now, it doesn't specifically say that all the time we have to say the same prayer, our Father who art in heaven. But we do need to remember that we, we should adorn the Father. Amen. That we should be consecrated. That, that, that we, 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 should, we should live in, 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 in a place where we can uh, intercede for others. Intercession. And we, we can pray for God's protection. And for his power. And through this Lent season, when we begin to pray in those areas, watch how you grow. Watch what happens in other people's lives. Watch what happens with you. Because when we begin to pray, we will see God's hand move in so many areas. And if this is the peace, the intimate peace that is missing, the intricate peace that is missing, then we'll know exactly where we need to be. So I want you to think this week that as you begin to pray, what kind of things do you pray for? What kind of things are you praying about yourself? What kind of things are you praying for others? What kind of things are you praying in your church? What kind of things are you praying in this world? And the biggest question of all is do you believe God? through this power of communication with him, to be in commune with him, that he can change the world, that he can change our time, that he can change the things that are around us just by asking, just by speaking to him. Amen. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The blueprint for our prayer life in this Lent season. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for giving us a mode of communing with you. God, that we seek you first, the kingdom of God and your righteousness. Then it says all these things will be added unto us. God, I thank you, Lord God, that you add to us, Lord God, when we give to you, when we seek you, God, with our whole heart, with our whole mind, Lord God, with all of our strength, with everything within us, Lord God, that we seek you first, Lord God, we can watch 
things begin to happen. We can see things. We can know things. We can discern things in this time. Lord God, we can also hear from you. For many, God, will come to you and call you, Lord, Lord. You say, why do you call me, Lord, when you don't do my will? Father, I pray for your will in our lives to be done today in Jesus' name. God, I ask, Lord God, that you would continue, God, to bless us. We beseech your holy name. Father, we thank you, God, for who you are, our Abba Father. And we ask, Lord God, that today your will be done in our lives. God, we ask that your bread, the word of God, that we break with you, Lord God, will be open and, 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 and be shared with all of us, God, that we may hear and understand what you have to say to us today. God, that you will forgive us our trespasses, our debts with others. And God, that you will protect us, God, from the evil one as we continue to deliver your word. God, we pray for those who are sick and in need, Lord God, today, that you would heal them and restore them. God, we pray, God, for those who are in prison, that you would deliver them. And God, I pray that today you will challenge us through this Lent season to really get to know and understand, God, how your prayer works in our lives. The simple format, Lord God, expressed to you, regardless of how we seek you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm so glad that you had the moment to begin to uh, uh, witness those things that, that God has called for us to do in this Lent season. And we're just asking you this week, go and pray for somebody and be blessed.